Hello and welcome to hobby vlog number 162. This week, the sad thing is I didn't get time to hobby with Rosie, but the reason for that is I've been spending more time with her doing other things. So, uh, so yeah, um, I'm hoping to get some time today, so you'll maybe see that again in next week's vlog. Uh, but yeah, for now, nothing with Rosie. So if that's what you've joined for, <laughs> then I'm sorry to disappoint you. Uh, but I have got quite a few other bits and pieces done. It's been a fun week, uh, not least because of all the other stuff I've been doing non-hobby related with Rosie, like watching almost the entirety of The Hobbit, and she's loving it. Uh, so yeah, there's plenty of content in here to uh, show you how much progress I've been making. TCU Challenge is coming along nicely uh, and various other projects as well, including the, um, uh, the playing in memory of my, of my father. So yeah, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I really love hearing from you and uh, they really do inspire me, those comments. So, so don't be shy, do say hello, particularly if you're new, I'd love to hear from you there. And uh, to all my regular commenters, well, you know how much I appreciate it. So thank you in advance. So I'll shut up rambling now. I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you again at the end. Right, so I'm starting to get a little bit of a methodology to doing this. I'm making use of this steak knife, or whatever, I think it's a steak knife, to come along and with my hands behind it all the time, I can get lots and lots of this taken off quite quickly as you can see. It's very, very hard work, but it's working and that's what matters. So I can come along at the top and trim down and we're really starting to get to very close to the resin in a few places. But it's hard work, as you can see. So I will get a little bit more of this done and I'll show you the next stage, which is just as hard work. I really should have used a proper release agent, shouldn't I? <laughs> you live and learn. Right, so I need a rest because <coughs> that's tiring. So what I've got here is my rotary sander and of course it's going to make a horrible noise but what we can do is I can run this on here, I'll put some music on and you can see the results. So it's not very quick but it does start to get down to the to the resin. Now what I'll have to do is come in here with a much finer sand and sand down because it does have put a very large high grit on that. But yeah, it's a combination of the both and we will get there. This is going to take a while, which is going to really slow down my next step. I was really looking forward to doing the next step. But I need to finish this. I'm not going to do anything else until I finish this. My reward for getting this done is going to be the step after this. So yeah, don't be surprised if the next time this appears on the vlog is quite a long time ago. As you can see, it's not very easy. And it's very time consuming. But it's that or throw away about £3,000 worth of materials. So I'm just going to have to keep at it. Any more bright ideas? Leave them in the comments. Of course. I'm open to hear them. But yeah, very annoying indeed to have to go through this. Really need to get a sander that's going to sand away it. The problem is, is the resin is absolutely rock hard. I mean, you can't even chip it. And this bit of card here is actually impregnated. I'm down to the last bit and this has resin in it. So it's very, very hard to remove, but I am getting there. 
it's just going to take a while. So yeah, as I say, give me a couple of months and I'll be back. Well, as you can see, I've got myself some of my uh, thin XPS that I like to use for this sort of thing and cut it so that it's completely the right the covers the top of the of the base however that's not how I want it to be as I've said what I want to do is to have it so it's um, going to wood on either side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it so that it looks like it's a runway like that so I'll chop those corners off like that so let me get that done now quickly just have a look and see the width the width there's about 22 and the width there's about I did that exactly 22 exactly both ways so we'll just trim that down I've got my sharp knife here actually move the move the wood out of the way use the cutting board for what it's there for the cutting board the cutting mat and then I'll get my um, get my wire, brush and score up both sides and then I'll glue it in place using uh, the grabby glue that I use because PVA just doesn't cut it for this kind of stuff. I actually have had, a, had it fail on me a few times PVA now, particularly with the temperatures that we get. It gets a bit cold and the PVA just gives way. So you can see there we have a strip of a runway which I will, which looks really well actually. Uh, what I'll then probably do actually is I'm going to uh, just trim these edges so that it's not quite such a sharp edge. So I'll just kind of bevel that down a bit. like this there we are there we go so as I say get yourself a wire brush and score into this insulation particularly if you get the stuff that's shiny like this because it will not hold anything and it will not stick if you don't then this makes a nasty sound so i will skip over this so already that's got a nice texture to it but that's not going to be the last of what i do however i'm going to glue this down and weight it down and leave it overnight to uh, to go off I can use my grabby glue on this. There we are, brilliant. So I'll let that dry. Well, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to stain the wood. I was going to, so I'm gonna have a quick look at my wood stains and have a decide because I can do that now while I wait for this to go off as well just to redeem some time and get this done a little quicker but whether I do that or not I'll bring you back but the next thing that I need to do is to start putting the transfers on the plane and there are a lot of transfers if I can find the transfer sheet there it is there's a lot of very small transfers as you can see so I'm going to sit down now um, and do these. I will probably uh, show you how I do the first one or two and then I'm going to sit down, put a, a YouTube video on and just get stuck into it. Um, so yeah, I've got myself ready and uh, show you how I do transfers. Uh, I'm not a major expert but they're relatively easy transfers are so yeah and I'll show you how I do that so I'll be back in a second. Alright so let's get this done. Here is the instructions and each of those numbers is basically a transfer. So what we're going to do, I'm going to actually do the bottom first, which is number 12. So on the sheet, you can see here, we have number 12. What I've got here is a pot of hot water, not 
baking hot but hot enough and what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully cut out these transfers from the sheet so I've got a knife and I'm just scoring these out so if I just drop the camera down you can see so just very carefully there we are so now we've got those transfers ready what I'll do is I'll drop them into the hot water and that helps them to separate off from the um, from the sheet now what you then want is some tweezers and I also use um, Microsol and Microset which I really do highly recommend so Microsol and Microset is um, the way that you basically can get a really good attachment and also a good uh, it actually um, uh, conforms to all of the kind of like shapes and what have you that you've got on your on your plane or on your kit so I'll get a couple of soft brushes don't have to be nice brushes these I've just got a whole pot full of these up here <laughs> and what I'll do is if you look at the back it says first brush micro set onto the model where the decal is to be applied so this is the micro set blue so we'll very carefully take that and where it's going to be applied is basically here so just there so I put some micro set there and then I'm going to put the lid on because I'm clumsy what I then do is I come along with my tweezers go into my warm water and this roundel is now loose and comes out really nicely so there it is and what we'll do is we'll just drop this in place like that okay perfect so then a little bit of tissue just to take the excess off there we are and then you paint your micro sole on top and this is what conforms it and you can accidentally move it or deliberately move it whichever you want and I need to move it because it's not quite in the right place just looking at the instructions it needs to be against that line there we are so there we are I want to make sure that stays there so what we then do is we then carefully paint the micro uh, sole on and that will help it to stick so there we are that's it so like I say I'm going to do the rest of them as many as I can tonight and then just work through it for the next couple of days probably to be honest and uh, I'll show you what it looks like when I've finished that's how I do transfers well this has literally been a nightmare this is the morning after this is as far as I got last night and I kind of threw my toys out this is so fine I broke it in so many areas you can see I managed to get the shape right here but on this side it all just fell apart <clears throat> really really fine and trying to cut them out and not cut them in half was very very difficult I have I think nearly finished doing the fine yellow lines I hope um, and then hopefully the rest will be relatively simpler which is kind of why I picked doing the, the fine lines first but yeah not easy at all and uh, yes I gave up and I gave up in such a rush that I left the lid off my micro sole <laughs> which I don't often do anyway yeah onwards and upwards but if you do this kit do bear in mind you need to be incredibly careful and a little bit lucky and maybe more talented than I am to get these uh, to get these transfers on without breaking them so I do hobby in with Rosie that's not on camera sometimes and this is something that we did just over the weekend which is really awesome I bought this about two years ago and uh, she's finally old enough to have given it a go at painting and she pretty much painted it all herself I did help a little bit at times when she asked but as you've seen on on the other videos I tried to give her a chance and then if she wants help then I don't say no because it's really nice to be to have people helping you 
but I let her do pretty much all of it herself. And this is something which lights up. Don't know how well it's going to show because I've got my lights on in here. Yes, so it changes colour. Isn't that cool? So that's going to be a nice little display uh, for Christmas and I've written the date on the bottom because we may end up doing the one of these a year, we're not sure. But yeah, really, really pleased with that. I just thought I'd show it off because I'm proud. So I've finished painting all of Smaug in the uh, flat red. And what I've just started to do, but I've changed my mind on it, um, I've just along here put some of this black red. But I don't think it's given me the result I want. So now I've pulled out some German camouflage black brown. And I'm going to see how that goes on. And that's better. So what I want to do basically is along the spine here and on these spikes, they need to be darkened up quite a lot. And then after they're darkened, I will then do some highlighting on it as well. But for now, what we're looking at doing is not painting on too thick. I still want the red to be showing through in places, but we do want to kind of come along here, as you can see, with this, with this dark browny black and really add a lot of depth and interest to the spine and also on the nose and just wherever I think it looks good to be honest. So that's my next step, darkening up the spines and the spikes and the kind of like more crusty, ooh, not the camera sorry, more crusty looking areas like hair on the wing and what have you. Let me uh, get the camera, light the light in a bit better for that. That's better. I can see better as well now. So yeah, this is where the fun starts, where you really start to play with your paint. It's not just trying to get a good coverage of red, which I did get, it took a while. I'm pleased that I decided to go red all over rather than trying to leave gaps, because I think this process that I'm doing now is going to be easier now that there's now that there's a base colour of red, it almost makes me wish I'd primed in in red. I do have some red primer. That would have been smart, wouldn't it? Never mind. It's all good. This is going to come together now. So I'm just going to crack on with this. Um, when I change colour or change technique, I will bring you back. But for now, it's just going to be picking out these high bits and trying to make them look a little bit more interesting and uh, give him some depth and variety to his colour. And by the way, today we saw Smaug again, started watching the films. Rosie loves Smaug. She jumped a mile right at the end of an unexpected journey. When uh, Smaug's eye opened, she jumped a mile, bless her. But then she started laughing out loud. So uh, just made a jump, didn't actually scare her, thankfully. <laughs> so anyway, not rambling. I'm going to carry on with this. So I decided I'm going to stain the wood. I've got this which is wood stain and it is just very light um, so it won't up, uh, give very much colour which I'm happy with but it will just preserve it so I'm going to actually stain the whole of it. So first of all I'm going to stain this top bit and then when that's gone off a bit I'll stain the underneath as well just to keep it preserved because this is very very important to me as you all know and uh, once this is done and dried then I'll do the texture which will give it the correct um, give it give it the correct texture for tarmac uh, I might do cement I'm not sure but anyway it's all the same technique until I get to painting it so I'll do that but I want to get this done first and this will take a while to dry it's cold now so it doesn't go off as quick so I'll just do a couple of coats of this and then it will be a uh, that will be ready for me to, to do the next step. So uh, yeah, I might put lift that onto a, onto a little tray and then I can do the sides as well. So let me just, just grab a tray. There we are. And what I can do is come along the sides and stain them as well. So anyway, 
I'll get this done. I'll bring it back for the next step, which on this will be applying the, the texture to the pavement. But I'm also currently really fighting the um, transfers, as I've said, really, really fiddly. I'm nearly done on the horrible ones. Hopefully the rest of them are going to be relatively easy. But that was a tough old session doing those lines and uh, kind of put me off a bit. <laughs> I'm not very impressed with that, with the results I got. But anyway, I'll keep this on and I'll bring it back for the next step. So I've decided to pivot away from some of this build uh, and I'll explain why. And I'm going to put the dinosaur park onto this sheet of blue, um, blue foam. Now, the, main, the two main reasons for me doing that, the first one is I haven't yet fully designed the layout. So to come along and start to put model railway you know, tracks and a station on this would really preempt that bit too much and might back me into a corner, which I don't really want to get into. Um, and um, yeah, the second thing is uh, about the station specifically, I do have my cricket coming, um, but I want to learn how to use that and I want to make use of that to make this. So um, I'm probably only gonna, gonna receive that in time for me to do a good job and I want to do a good job on it. So basically I'm going to make the park and do it so that it can get dropped onto the layout when I get time, when I know where it's going to go. Very similar to how I did that bridge with the B um, B52 going over the uh, going over it. Um, and uh, I will uh, I will basically just do the park and then uh, drop it in place when I get to it. So I've been making a lot of progress on the painting, as you can see. I've also got all the Velociraptors painted. There's several more down on my uh, painting bench, which I'm going to go and do after I finish shooting this little clip and talking it through. So yeah, that's, that's the plan. So um, my first thing I'm gonna do is work out roughly where my dinosaurs are gonna go. And uh, you can see that I'm still going with the idea of having the uh, two uh, brontosauri uh, being the entrance. So what I'll then be able to do is basically start to draw out what I want of my paths. So um, you'll be walking, the path will come in through underneath these brontosauri. And then uh, potentially over here, we'll have um, the, uh, this is gonna be, let's write that down. So, Bront and Bront. And once I've got this done, I'm gonna be able to start to actually cut out shape and put the base material down, which obviously is a very important thing to do. So what I'm going to do here is have a lake over here. Not a very big one. A lake and have the Parasaurolophus coming up out of the lake. So what that means is I'm going to need to have the path is going to have to go over in this direction. What I probably will do is on this way, I'll have the Triceratops and the Stegosaurus here. So maybe what I'll do is I'll have the path kind of come here, do this, do that. What I want to do is have it so that the path is like a, an adventure trail that kids or out of families can walk along to see different things. Um, and this is also probably gonna end up it being a slightly smaller area, which is also good. So what we'll then do is we'll then have the flying creature maybe here, so the pterodactyl here and here. And the path could even go underneath them maybe. Like that. And then we'll come to Carnosaur Corner. So we'll get the Carnosaur which is downstairs. And then we'll come in here, I'll have a tree, have some bushes and trees and what have you. This is good, this is really starting to come together now. I like doing this on camera. Uh, and then we can have the Velociraptors, because I've got lots of Velocirapti. Let me just grab them over. They're teeny tiny compared to the rest of the dinosaurs. So they're my Velociraptors um, and T-Rex. And 
And what we could even do is bring the path like this. So T-Rex is here. Then we'll have the Oviraptor. Actually, Oviraptor is going to go over here because they were also relatively lakey, I believe. So Ovi, and they are also tired. Tired? Tiny? I am tired. They're tiny. So this is going to be Steg. This is going to be Tops. That's what Rosie calls them. Steg and Tops. Actually, she calls them exactly correctly. Triceratops and Stegosaurus, she's very bright. So here we can have, um, I'm not sure what the name is actually. There's another one that I've got downstairs and I can't remember what it's called, um, but that, that will work nicely there. And then that can basically feed back into the path. So what that gives me is a rough scale. So I can see that if I kind of cut around here, I might want to do it square to make it a bit easier for me to to drop it into place, but I'll be bedding it in with the modeling compound anyway, so that's not the worst thing in the world. Um, so that gives me the rough shape and size of this piece. So what I've got to do now is I'll cut this out and uh, I will probably do a basic uh, modeling compound. I'll get the cutter and, and do the lake down a little bit. Some basic modeling compound um, and then smooth the path in while I'm doing it and then I'll be able to glue down these dinosaurs and uh, start doing the flocking. So that was a much longer clip than I expected but I did not expect to get as far as this so all win. I'll bring you along very shortly when I've cut this out and when I'm about to start working on the dip for the lake and then the rest of the uh, the rest of the scenery so it's not going to take very long now i'm umming and ahhing about modeling compound um, but first of all i will definitely come and cut the lake so i'll just get that i'll take a picture of this so i've got the layout and then i'll bring it back when i'm when i'm about to start doing that all right so that's cut out didn't take very long and i've snapped a picture so i can remember where they get where the things are going to go and i've got a little bit of space over here for the dinosaurs i can't remember the names of what i'm going to do is very carefully try to carve this little lake out. Now it doesn't need to go that deep because I can use paint to give an impression of depth. But I do want it to have a little bit of a of a shoreline around it. So doing this is, is worthwhile. So I'm not sure what, how much I'm going to talk, whether I might put some music on I think while I do this. So I think this is going to take a little bit of time, but yeah, we're going to carve out this little basin for my water dinosaurs. So let's get it done. good so now we've got a little bit of a uh, depressed area and that can be turned into a little pond so I'm gonna spend a little bit of time now thinking about how I might uh, end up doing the, the base whether I'm gonna do model and compound or not but I'm gonna just let that settle in my mind I need to go to the paint bench and paint some of the uh, dinosaurs get them all done um, so yes yeah, so I've got to go and do that now and uh, I will bring you back when I get to the next step, which hopefully will involve showing you some more of the painted dinosaurs as well. So I'm just cracking away on this and I thought, you know what, I should turn the camera on because what I'm working on now is the splotchy bits on the wing. Now these would classically be really easy to do with, a, with an airbrush. You're just going to go pshht, 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 and that's going to give you the kind of like round blended effect that, that is on the cover art but I don't use airbrushes as I've said this has been done entirely without airbrush so I'm just going to show you the technique I'm using to get these done and it's basically a stippling type technique which hopefully is showing up okay um, on camera where I'm almost dry brushing 
not taking very much paint on, there's a little bit much on that one actually, not taking very much paint on and just kind of pushing it into the model, a bit tough with the, with the way the shot is, I might have to try and move the shot in a second and that's giving me a nice mottled effect as you can see and I'm pretty happy with it actually. So yeah, just thought I'd show that off very quickly. As I say, the main part of this, uh, the fear I had with this was looking at the cover art, the box art even, um, it was very clear that it had been done with an airbrush and working out how to achieve some of those effects without an airbrush was a little bit daunting. Now that's close enough for me, it doesn't look exactly like the, the, uh, this, this, the box art but it's close. Um, and what I've also done while I've not been filming because Sorry, I forgot. Let me see if I can just move this around to show you. If we turn this on its side, hopefully you can see that we've got the kind of glowing light color started on, on, on his chest. And that was done with a bit of um, yellow, so like ice yellow, um, and the white grey and I just did that as a blend and then pulled in some more of the dark German dark grey on the edges just to kind of like blend it in and it has turned out absolutely superbly. And the other thing to show which I've done since the last time I filmed, again turning it round, hopefully let's get the camera, get the light moved a little bit, hopefully you can see the little bits of stripiness going on the tail and oh, I've done that all the way around, all the way up the tail, so I've done the little tiger stripes. So the, actually, the, the, the last thing to do on this stage, <laughs> one of which is to glue on the uh, claw that I've broke, broken off several times, is to actually paint the claws. Now, uh, looking at the box art again, um, they look like they're going to be potentially in the same brown, um, or maybe even I might do something a little bit, um, a, a little bit more uh, metallic. Uh, I just realised you couldn't see the uh, the broken uh, thing because it's off camera this way, but in mind. Um, yeah, so I might even do the metallic, uh, but I'm not sure. I might even do them like in a in, in gunmetal grey, so they're shiny. Um, and then it's going to be eyes and mouth, and then looking over to see whether I want to put a little bit more mottling on the inside. I'm not going to do that now. I've run out of time this evening, so I might do some more mottling on the inside, just give a little bit more of a variety inside the wing, um, and a little bit more... Uh, shading and colour potentially at the bottom end of the wing, which I might do now actually while I'm while I'm filming. So just do some kind of like a little bit of dry brushy type effect up here just to just to bring some more variation. So yeah, that sort of thing. I'm um, I'm enjoying this now. I'm feeling a lot more confident and a lot more comfortable with what I'm doing as opposed to what I was when I started. So um, yeah, you can see less is more. Have a little bit on your brush. You can always add more, but it's very hard to take it off like I put too much just there, but that's fine, it'll be okay. So yeah, it's basically a bit of a dry brush. Right, longer clip than I expected, but uh, there we are. That's where I'm at with Smaug. I'm going to pause now, like I say, because I've run out of time, and I'll come back to it again tomorrow. All right, so the uh, transfers Oh, coming on. I've managed to do the tail and, and that very, very slowly because it's proven to be quite an annoying transfer process. What I'm going to do now is apply the texture to the runway. So I've got myself my masking tape, which is very sticky. I'm just going to mask off the wood on either side. So I want this to be nice and any overflow. I don't want to be going on the wood because it will dry immediately because it will just soak straight into the wood and you won't be able to remove it. So just mask that off like that. <clears throat> and then here is my mix. So I've done this many, many times and I do have another video uh, showing exactly how I make this, which I will attempt to remember to link um, above and below, but if you um, look in my basics, you'll, f uh, you'll find it. This is, this is basically grout, like tile grout, mixed with a little bit of very fine sand or dust, PVA, glue and some water. And it works very well for what we're trying to do here, which is tarmac or cement if I decide to dry brush it grey. 
which I might do, we shall see. Anyway, so I'm just gonna apply this over the whole of the area and the stripes and the strokes actually work well for, tar for tarmac because they are, have little striations in them often <coughs> because of how it's laid down. And when this is dry, you need to do one coat of this normally. It's a very quick process. You will have a very convincing hard standing or what have you. So there's a good, it's a really good tip, really good technique this for lots of different things. So yeah, stop filming now because well, all I'm going to do is that and I'll bring you back <coughs> when I come to put any markings, which I might very well do. I might put some line markings on. And I just realised I should also have masked off the side. So I'm going to mask off the side as well now before I do any more. But I'll bring back when that's dried and when I'm on to the next step. Hi, right, so I've decided that I'm going to go for a thin skim of uh, the modelling compound, as you can see here. So I don't know how long this is going to take. And I'm obviously not going to film it all because it would just be a lot of me doing this. But I just thought I'd show you how I'm planning on doing this and how I'm planning on doing the path. So what I'm going to do is apply the thin skim of modeling compound all around where the path isn't initially. Smooth it all out. I can have some little undulations in it. Then I'll be able to plant trees and bushes and do all of the other fun stuff. And then once this is dried, I will then come over with the, with probably with a, um, not with the sand mix because of the scale. I'll probably do it with the dust and uh, tile grout. And then I'll cover the entirety of the base with that. And that'll mean that where the paths are, which I'm making them a little bit wide at the moment, but I will fill in those gaps a little bit more now because I can push it around. This is one of the ways of doing this thin is to apply it thick and then just push it around like so. But yeah, when I, when I apply my texture, the whole thing will look the same, but the paths will just be very slightly sunken, which is what I want to have. So yeah, lots and lots of this and a little bit of patience. So I'll get this done. Once the um, once the modelling compound is a little bit drier, what we'll do is I'll wet my hands. Sorry, it's a bit noisy. It's, uh, um, it's vibrating a lot. Um, I'll wet my hands and I'll come along and I will smooth it out as well so it's a completely smooth surface because I don't want it to be too lumpy and bumpy. I don't mind having little undulations or changes in in how high, you know, in elevation. But I really don't want to have, sorry, Zena is growling. Shush, Zena. Zena is growling. She's on my, on, my back, on my sofa looking up at the workman on the roof terrace and is growling because she can see them moving around. Now, yeah, so I'll, I'll smooth it all out so it's not got any fingerprints or whatever in it. So, yeah, listen to that dog. You wouldn't believe how tiny she is. She's bigger than she was. Come on, come on camera, you noisy little thing. Here we are, sat on the sofa, growling. Can't really see her. There's ours easy. There we are. Anyway, enough of that. I'm gonna finish this off. I'll bring you back when I get to the next step. Well, I'm pretty happy with how that worked out, as you can see. Uh, I've got all of the modeling compound on this base and I've left the paths. Some, some places it goes a bit high, which I don't mind. Most of it's very low, just a couple of millimetres above the blue foam. So what we're going to do now is I've got some of my mix of uh, grout, sand and PVA, which actually was a old mix that I used for another project that I stuck in the fridge. And you can see, it's been a couple of days in the fridge, you can see it's still very, very usable. So that's a really good way of not wasting material. And I knew when I mixed slightly too much for the previous project, that I was going to be able to use it on this. So that's what I'm going to do now. It's going to give a little bit of texture because there's a bit of dust in it, but it will also cover over the whole thing as a nice black base coat. So it kind of does, does two things at once. So I'll get this all painted on over the top. I will almost certainly need to mix some more up, but at least I won't waste what I made the other day. Um, and then when that's dried, which won't take very long, 
we'll work on the next step. I do still have some dinosaur painting to do, actually. It's not completely ready to even start dressing this with the dinosaurs. So, so yeah, so I'll probably work on painting and flocking and what have you. And uh, in that time, I'm going to have to get all of the other dinosaurs finished painting. But I don't know when that will be. I'm uh, not not painting at the painting desk as much as I wanted to do this week because I've been focused on getting my dad's plane done, honestly. Which is also a cool thing to do. But I do need to get these these dinosaurs done so I can finish this in time. Some people have already completed their entries, which is really cool. Anyway, enough rambling. I'll get this done. I'll bring you back for the next step when I get to it. Well, that's turned out really nicely. I'm not sure if I'm going to paint it. It's got a nice little bit of variation in it naturally, as you can see. And I think that if I paint it lighter, it might actually give me a little bit of an incorrect kind of contrast with the plane. Now, also, you can see I've been continuing to do my transfers on the plane, just sitting steadily working through them. I've still got quite a lot to do, but that's all I've got left to do now, because what I can quickly peel off my masking uh, and uh, the base is pretty much done. A really simple job, really simple technique but it works really, really well, and it's gonna just be enough for what I was looking to achieve with this build. So yeah, so I'm just gonna keep cracking on, like I say, in the evenings uh, with my um, doing off all of the transfers on the plane, and then I'll glue the plane in place, because I'll have to, because it's a tail sitter, as I say. Uh, I should have put weight in the nose, really, but never mind. And, uh, no, but I wanna glue it in place anyway, so it doesn't get knocked off and then that can be mounted up underneath the picture of my dad. So next time we'll come back to this will be when it's all done and I'm gluing it in place and I'm about to actually stick it on the wall. Well, that worked really well. As you can see, I've got a really nice texture going over all of this. You can clearly see where the paths are um, here, going round. Um, oh, and there's another path there, which I've covered over a bit, but that's where the path goes. It's very easy to see. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got my brown paint and I'm going to use this normal brown paint. I'm just going to come over and I'm going to dry brush over, over this just to give a little bit more colour. I'm not going to paint too much on. It's not actually a traditional dry brush because there isn't really enough um, texture to do a traditional dry brush. But the point is I don't want to go too deep and cover over all of the nice deep black depth that I've built up. And this, funny enough, is going to start to inform what this part of the model railway is going to look like. So it's actually a, a bit of a, a bit of a decision to go with this brown, but I think I will. I think I will. So this will basically bring out all of the textures and also give a nice undercoat that I can put my grass and flock and trees and tufts and what have you over the top of. So yeah. Get that done, won't take long as you can see. And then I really am going to be stuck until I've got the dinosaurs in because I want to at least be able to position this brush is losing its is losing its uh, bristles a bit. But yeah, at least I want to be able to position the dinosaurs and everything I'm going to have on before I start to work out exactly where I'm going to have the trees and where I'm going to have the grass. Um, and I've nearly finished that. That got a bit a bit hard, but never mind. It could be a muddy patch there, that's fine. There we are. What I'll probably do for the paths is put some more texture down and paint them white, or maybe look, make them look like white sand, and that's what you're basically covering around, going around on. Uh, but I'll do that later. For now, I'm happy with that stage. If I can get rid of these bristles that it's dropped. Um, yeah, for now I'm happy with that stage. I will now focus on getting the dinosaurs finished. Let's grab a couple so you can see how they look. And uh, once the dinosaurs are all finished, there we are. Once the dinosaurs are all finished, then I will be able to, like that, like that, there we are. Then I'll be able to do the fence or whatever I'm going to do and do the grass and what have you. And it'll all look really really cool so there we are pretty happy with how that's looking i'll bring you back when i get to the next step well i've finished painting up the queen and the eagle as you can see i've been putting pictures of this on my instagram if you want to see the process and go and check that out um 
not glued together yet, but you can see where the queen is going to sit and how the eagle is positioned. <coughs> However, what I want to do before I glue the queen on is work out at what angle the eagle is actually going to be sitting on this base. And for that, I'm going to need to design the base. So that's going to be the next thing for me to do on this. Just thought I'd show you that I have painted it now and uh, I am now ready to start on the base. So um, I'm going to have some thinking, do some planning, and I'll bring you back when I've made my mind up. Well, there we are. Back to a little bit more of a normal beard video length, up to 45 minutes as of the beginning of this outro, which is pretty cool. And yeah, as you can see, what I said last week, definitely the mojo has returned. I'm starting to want to hobby and enjoy hobbying and spend less time just staring and, and being not very interesting person. And that's obviously a release for me. And it does mean that there's longer videos for you on a Sunday. And I'm sure that makes every one of you happy, particularly those of you that have made it this far. And if you have, thank you very much. So I'll wrap up as I'm currently always saying, and I really hope that soon I can stop saying this, but to anyone who is impacted directly or indirectly by the horrible war in Ukraine, then my thoughts go out to you and anyone you know who may be, uh, and to everyone else, please, or to everyone, not to everyone else, to all of you, whether you're impacted or not, to all of you, please do stay healthy, stay safe, and stay well.